Sit down here. Children can sit here, so others can sit there. Mm. Come forward. You can come here, some of you. So many can come in now. Who oh, on this side is a lot of room. This side. Some people can sit there. Can come here. On this also some people can sit down. Yes. You all come along at the side, that is room. Can come in. Is there is still room? Yeah. Yeah, come along, guys. Yeah. Children can move forward a little bit. No. This side. Come on. Your children can come this side so more men can sit down. No. Yeah, sit down. Come along. Now my stay in England is completing its twelfth year. And that is the reason I wanted to talk to people about Sahaja Yoga, how far it has gone and where are we lacking. The greatest thing that has happened is that we have established a religion announcement. <laughs> <coughs> Nirmala Dharma, as we call it, the Vishwa Nirmala Dharma. And you know the meaning of the word Vishwa means universal. Nirmala means pure and Dharma means religion. This has been established in America and we have to register it here in England. Now uh, it is very important that when we belong to a religion we have to know what are the commandments of that religion is. And so far we have not drafted anything. It cannot be a thing made suitable to people or suitable to human beings. It cannot be. And it cannot compromise with your suitability. Like in Russia, as I told you the story, I went there <coughs> and I said I would like to see a church. So they took me down <coughs> to a church uh, which was the Orthodox 
<coughs> Greek church and uh, my husband was also there, we were VIPs. So the head of the church came down, took us to lunch. And he said that today, it, these days they are fasting, so he cannot uh, take any meat. He said, all right, we all sat down. But he went on drinking, drinking, drinking so much so that he forgot that he had guests or anything. He never even came to see us all. So the officers who were with us started all laughing when we came out. He didn't know where he was because he was fasting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when we came out, these officers said that, see, this is religion. So then they told me the story that Tsar had an idea that everybody has got a religion. Well, why not? Russia also should have some religion. So they sent for the Catholic people to come down and tell them about Catholicism. So the Catholic came, that time there was only Catholicism. So they came and they said, all right, Catholicism is very simple, that you can drink, do what you like, it's only thing you cannot marry again. Tsar said this won't work out in Russia. It's difficult. Not for us. So he says, all right, now let's have another one. So they sent for the Muslim Islam. So the Muslims came in, and the Muslims came in and they said that uh, you can marry any number of wives, doesn't matter, but you can't drink. They said this won't suit us. <laughs> So they had another third religion that was this supposed to be orthodox, you see, orthodox religion, the most liberal one, was this orthodox Greek religion and they said, oh, you can drink and you can have as many wives as you like as long as you give us sufficient money. <laughs> Only their interest was money. They said, this is all right, <laughs> very good religion, we have to give them money and only thing they have to do is to call us religious so that we are religious people. Nobody should say they have no religion. That's how the religion came into this country, Russia. And with this kind of a religion, who's going to believe into it? It's correct. After coming to Sahaja Yoga, you can see that all these so-called religious bodies have ruined the name of religion completely. All those people who talked of religion, they start in one theory to another theory, one incarnation to another incarnation they used, have ended up into a nonsensical stuff. And everybody is seeing so clearly now that it does not give you any, any whatsoever idea as to what is God, as to the experience of God. So this religion that was established was to give balance to people, has made them very imbalanced, they are fanatics. Everyone, Protestants, as I told you, are the greatest fanatics because they are very subtle and they are very sophisticated, so nobody can find out their fanatic ideas. With this, now we have Sahaja Yoga. And Sahaja Yoga has given you realization, the real experience of the Divine. For the first time now you can feel that you are the Spirit. You can feel the powers of Spirit. There are so many ways in these twelve years you must have seen that you should be convinced that there is an all-pervading power which is active, which is helping you, through which you have come up to this stage 
and that it has empowered you to do miraculous things. We have got my photographs to give you a proof. The other day somebody took a photograph in Jordan. At the time of Sastrat Puja thinking that mother gave a bandhan to Jordan. And the photograph has got the light, the bandhan light. So the unconscious is working very strong. And it is trying to help people to understand God's ways. So we cannot change His ways, His styles, His rituals, His methods. That's why I'm here to tell you. I'm like a mouthpiece of the unconscious to tell you what is to be done, what is right, what is wrong, what is not to be done. Now, in this religion, you yourself are awakened into religion yourself. You become sensitive to religion yourself. The coding and everything is within yourself. You have to yourself feel it, how you feel vibrations, when you feel the vibrations, how do you lose vibrations, what happens, all those things are just within yourself. Of course, after some time we might be able to say what behavioral changes one should take. But you can find out yourself if you want to find out what is right and what is wrong and what is to be done to keep up the vibrations. But vibrations are, one way, extremely charitable, very charitable things. Even if you do a little wrong, they may not disappear that moment. But you will get a feeling within yourself that this is wrong. After some time you will find it will show that you have no vibrations and you will know that you have no vibrations. So the first principle of Sahaj Dharma is, or what you call the Vishwa Nirmala Dharma is, that you should be able to keep up your vibrations going as they are or increase them or improve on their sensitivity. The more sensitive you are, the better you are. If the sensitivity is lacking, then one must say that Sahaja Yoga has failed in you so far and you have to work it out. But the problem of human being is very different. That is, that when they are ascending, when they are trying to get out of the Bhava Sagara, there are so many human things which are with them. And those things try to bring them down again back to the place from where they started. For example, say you are a person who has had no power at all in life and also you are a person who has enjoyed some powers. Both are just the same. Both are power drunk or power hungry or whatever you may call it. A starving man is the same as a man who aspires for food all the time. Both are starving. In the same way the one who aspires for power in both ways is the same person. When he comes to Sahaja Yoga, instead of becoming humble and understanding that there is something lacking in me, myself, he starts fo forming groups. He starts saying, all right, this is not good, this fellow is not good, you better correct yourself, you do that, do this, that, and others. He does not want to f become a perfect person himself. The one who has attention towards anything like that or falls into any group whatsoever, goes into trouble and I immediately know from his face that something is wrong with this person. So to form into groups itself is a sign of our deterioration. Like in our cells in the body now, say, for example, say there are blood cells which are flowing. Suddenly when they are harmed or sick or anything, they coagulate together and it forms a lumpish thing. So when you are moving, you are free 
then one must understand that you are healthy. But as soon as there is a barrier made, that this man is bad, this woman is bad, so now a barrier is. The whole group, you see, forms one group here and a one group there and a one group there. But as Sahaja Yoga is complete discretion which is to be developed by the people who practice it, discretion, they have to also know there are some people who are not to be dealt with, to be discarded individually. Like there's somebody, one person, X person is there who is caught up very much and he's got lots of badhal, this, that. Now, if he's badhik or anything, everybody must individually drop him, not to discuss him or talk about him collectively, but just drop him if they were sensitive. If you are sensitive, immediately you know this person has a badha, nobody will go close to him. But invariably I have seen in groups when we meet, always five booths, if there are, they will all sit together. Immediately you know the booth is there, localized. And the five good people will never sit together. That means we are not yet developed ourselves individually within ourselves. So the first attitude to develop this dharma within us, dharma here means the one that is going to develop in our central nervous system, our own new dimension we have to develop within ourselves. In a deeper way it is what we call the subtler uh, being that is within us is to be awakened, that it lies in the, um, in the nerves, you can say, itself in the central nervous To develop that, we have not worked out. Why? Because our attention is still out. We are worried about another person, we are worried about third person, we are worried about this, he shouldn't say this, he shouldn't do. But the person who is really trying to improve himself will always go inward. Now, supposing he sees a person who has a bata, just shun that person, will be away from that person. Will not say anything collectively, will not discuss it, will not talk about it, just finish it. Not all that. But then you may say, Mother, then at least 50% Sahaja Yogis would be like that. I don't think so. If you can scan it out yourself, you'll find there are about four or five like that who are Badiks, which I know. The rest of you are all right. When you come in contact with them, then you get it, because you have not developed that powerful personality. And that's how I get sick myself, because you are within myself. So all of you must individually look after yourself, so collectively that's me, I am looked after. But we do not look after ourselves, that's the main point. There are so many methods by which we can just become perfect. How much time do we spend in that? Now, in the ashrams, whatever I have heard about England, that is the greatest place where one can become absolutely lost. If you want to lose your vibration, go to an English ashram especially in London. The vibrations in the ashram are the worst of all. Can you imagine such a thing? I mean, why it happens? One lazy bone comes in, in the ashram. He's got a booth in him. He's a lazy person. Normally a person should be active. So what he does? He does not want to get up in the morning. Another one tries to follow him. How are you going to ascend? Let us think about this. This lecture should not be just listened to, it is to be practiced, it is to be understood. You have to be serious about it. How are we going to ascend? Are we going to ascend by reading the book Ascent? 
or by listening to mother's tapes which is very interesting how are we going to improve by taking the medicine what is the medicine is nothing but meditation itself is the medicine now when do you do med- meditation you have to do meditation in the morning time that's the best time because you are not at busy early in the morning you get up and do it but you just can't get up i can't get up why not that day you just don't eat your food the whole day next day you get up you have to treat your body in such a way that it becomes your slave you have to use this body for enslavement and not this body for your enslavement your spirit's enslavement so if you could just understand that the only way to ascend is through meditation and not through all kinds of politics talking jabbering uh, mental uh, feats nothing of that but i've seen people they cannot steady lead it what we call sartatya means consistently they will do it today then do it tomorrow but in the ashram it should be a rule every morning there should be some nice music to be played in india the radio starts at about 6 o'clock in bombay i don't know if you have seen to that and 6 o'clock the first thing is the one what we call the <coughs> awakening of the gods gopal they start they start singing that from 6 eight nothing but bhajans and god's songs are there nothing else the whole of bombay has to listen to that there's nothing else no news so early in the morning when you get you can start with some sort of a conch or anything that you want to or with the bells or maybe what we call the ghanta that thing we have like that or you can start with a bhajan so that everybody gets the coin have your baths keep the room hot come and sit down for your meditation now those who are householders could be even worse than this because that's also another my house my child my family this my business i have to struggle through all this because everybody i am marrying this person now that person is running away so i have to marry another person that person is about to run then i have to get the third problem of the children then how to get the children all the time this problem is there everybody is bothering me with this problem what to do with the wife where to keep her she so horrid she is that and everything now all these problems can be solved on one point if you are a strong person you can solve the problem like that so instead of wasting your energy in solving the side matters why not you become something great yourself and get the problem solved by itself it's logical But what i have seen about people is this that they do not understand their own value and worth now as i have said this is shiva's country sada shiva's country with the kailasha itself now where you are born where you are sajubis what is your position here into what position have you come where are you think of your position as in the land of sadashiva the other day only i told them that in the land of sadashiva 
गणास आते हैं एंड एज द अमेरिकन गॉट द आइडिया ऑफ द स्मर्क्स दे आर द गणास एंड यू वोट फाइंड एनी स्मर्क सिटिंग डाउन इज सो एक्टिव नॉट वन स्मर्क यू फाइंड सिटिंग डाउन either he'll be a barber or he'll be washerman or he'll be beginner or he'll be fiddler or he'll be something doing so to become that you have to be active in your body the activity in the body has to come but from where to get the energy for the activity from the spirit and if you do not meditate how will you get to that you just tell me is there any way out this is the basic problem that people do not have regular habits they do not they are very hectic people extremely hectic in the west people are extremely hectic indians are that way quite regularized because of very strong parent you know parents themselves are sensible and regular we have to be regular too there are no regular habits somebody will get up at 6 o'clock somebody will get up at 9 o'clock somebody will get up at 10 o'clock and if you have to wake up an english one they say use a bar stool <laughs> of course that's the greatest sin that's the greatest sin but even if you have to commit the sin use a bar stool so sleep is such an important thing for them and they are always tired now why this tiredness comes in we must understand is due to heart because the heart is weak that's why you become tired if you raise the heart you'll be all right so one by one we'll see that why is it heart weak because we have done anti god things we have done things which we should not have done so our heart is weak they are always tired and they are not ashamed of saying i am tired anybody you listen to the television will be surprised they will have <sighs> in five minutes at least you must hear six seven times <sighs> coming up young people they will come and sit on the chair <sighs> first i used to think it's a fashion that you must do like this otherwise you are not impressive because you know the fashions here to impress people are so funny <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I thought it was a fashion, but why are you tired? Let's see. Why are you tired? Your heart. Heart is catch. Why is heart catch? In the very subtlest of subtle is that you have done anti God things. Now, how do you cure that? Now, let me have answers. We put you, mother. Huh? We will put you, mother, in our heart. Good idea. You have to put me in your heart. Now see how the cosmos of the whole Sah Yoga system since long has been built in. In you, heart is the most important part. From everything circulates. All right. This heart is the one when it fails. but the you are dead no more that the spirit resides in the heart all right now you are made like this even in your head that the heart center comes up exactly on the brahmarandra where it has to break so if your heart is weak you cannot pierce it so putting me in your heart and raising me to your sastrara that's the best way you can cure your heart but that's not so you also put some theological theological concepts on that i've seen people so mother i put you in my heart i love you very much this that everything but i see there's not mother there at all just lip service i'm putting you in my heart of course you are there where am i i try to find 
I can't see myself there. No, I'm not there. So from where do I see you through your eyes? If I'm there, I can see through your eyes. I can penetrate up to that. Such eyes are very different. Your eyes have to change through your heart. There's no deception in between. If your heart changes, your eyes will change. You don't have to tell me. I know that. So this I love you. Why? Because I wanted to have a job. Finished. I love you, Mother, because I thought my marriage will be so problem will be so. I give you this because I'll get money. I pray for you because I must have a child or something like that. It's so much below. But the state must reach where I just love you for nothing at all. Just love you because I enjoy it. I enjoy that love for my own enjoyment. Just for my own enjoyment I love. Not even for assent, for anything, but I just enjoy that love within myself. For nothing at all, just for myself, I love you. As long as you live on relative terminology, you cannot work it out. Now, why do I live in the ashram? It's cheap to live there. It's easy, children are looked after, you know, quite nice, you are safe. Mother also comes sometimes, if you are sick, she look after us, so she treats us. Otherwise I leave it to mother to do everything. Still you are in duality. You have to just love me because you enjoy it, otherwise I'm not asking you to love me, am I? How can you ask anyone you love me? Come along. I put a pistol. Come along, love me. <laughs> can you do it? You can't. You can demand money, you can demand anything, but can you say, all right, now, ransom, give me your love. So uh, it cannot be forced. So the depth of the heart must be brought in. Now heart is covered with funny ideas. The thought which is in the mind, as we say, actually the thoughts are covering the brain and those thoughts ultimately cover the heart. I have told you what is the connection between heart and the brain is. So if these thoughts are covering our heart, how can we open out? For example, a thought is there that I love mother because she has to sell my house. All right. Now the house doesn't sell. How is it? Mother has said it will be sold. Then why is it not sold? This is not a level of divine love. You are going to love the divine. It has to be pure love of simple purity. And that depth you all have, that's the special thing you have. All of you have that within you, that heart within you. If you understand this very small thing is actually the seed of all the mantras. Now when you say that you love me very much, I do not think you do love, but you ask yourself, do I really love Mother? 
No, face. No. I do not. Still, there are so many other foolish ideas into my head. Still, I am an intellectual. Still, I am seeing Mother from an intellectual point or from an emotional side. It's a state. It's a state of Nirananda. It's a state. And such a person is never challenged, and even if he's challenged, he's never affected. Such a person suddenly stands up, and you see a lotus before your eyes. Now you are sitting in the city which is governed by Sadashiva. Here you are born, you are all the great spirits who are born. Now you are the ones who have to give fragrance to the whole world. It, is, it has nothing to do with any other thing like status, money, position, nothing. What was the status of Christ? He was a carpenter's son. How much did he earn? Nothing. Did he go to a university? Never. Did he study any Greek mythology or something like that? Never. Did he bother his head about libraries? Never. But he was Christ. In the same way, it does not matter to what level you go, to what extent you go in your material side, it is your spiritual side which is important. And for that it is important you must face it. That's only possible in meditation. Honestly to face it. But the trouble is as soon as Mother gives the lecture, it's finished there. Nobody thinks, what has happened? Why do you cry? Tina? Mommy, you want to go to mommy? All right. Where is mommy? All right. Take her, take her. Don't cry, don't cry. Mommy is there. What is that? Poor thing. She's feeling. Don't cry, don't cry. It's all right. All right. No, 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 no. Nothing to cry. Now, as I said, 12 years of my tapasya is over. I've really worked very hard, I must say. England is not easy and London is even worse. And you get terrible pain from your liver, it starts. Moving towards your heart, just like a dragon in this country. The liver is bad, the heart is dark. It's not easy to live here. Moreover, I've put you all in my heart and you are circulating in my body. You have to be kind to me. The level has to be much better. But as soon as somebody achieves some level, people start criticizing me, saying things against that person, forming groups, forming things. As I told you before, you are also very fortunate that I am here in England. I have spent much more time than I have spent anywhere else. And still I cannot say definitely about any one of you, I mean of course some of them are perfect, but otherwise, that any day you will become John Gilpin, you can't say. Suddenly I find somebody just suddenly jumping on a horse. So, this character that we have within us of becoming John Gilpin must be watched. Humility is needed. We have to be humble 
and see within ourselves. Why do we become John Gilpins? Suddenly, what happens to us? This is a very, very common character. The example I I went to a hotel with my husband, stayed overnight in England, and next morning, I think there was a wedding or something, whatever it was. And two ladies, young girls, I should say about twenty-five years of age, wearing a nice dress and a hat and all that, talking to their boyfriends who were also very dandily dressed, talking as if they were some sort of, you see, dukes or duchesses or something like that, you see, talking so big with their hats and this and that. My husband looked at him, by the way, put on his spectacles. These are the girls who come to clean our in our house in our office. So really, look at them. Just putting the hat, they feel, feel they have become duchess or what? And as soon as they saw him, they became very peevish. Right now, but I was amazed. How could they suddenly take up a role of a? Uh, some sort of a royal family stuff, you know, they were walking. <laughs> I mean, we couldn't help laughing, both of us, but I mean, he laughed much more because he said, I can't believe it there. And he could not believe it for a while, but when they became peevish, you see, the reaction, their reaction really proved that they have just become a uh, duchess. They had some hats on. If they wear a hat and talk big, finished. Now they're big. In the same in spirituality. Just because you have been to Sahaja Yoga, finished, then now you are yogi of Yogeshwara, more than Sri Krishna yourself. So one thing is this John Gilpin business, which is stupid, which makes a mockery out of ourselves. There are stories and stories I can tell you of this mockery. How ego makes you a stupid fool. So this is the biggest hurdle I think we have here, is the ego. But then you tell somebody, then said, it was my ego he did, he did it. As if the ego hangs somewhere like a monkey, and he, the monkey came and did the job, and again went back on hanging <laughs> out. <coughs> Otherwise it's my bhut which did it. <laughs> but when do you do something? Why should we deceive ourselves? This is a very serious type of deception of ourselves. Why? We are Sajogis, we are born in the Sadashiva's land. Why not we be that beautiful being which is truthful, which is real, which is within us, which is the Spirit? So the greatest hurdle is of our ego, which can be shown in many ways. because you will see your reflection there. The first is, as I told you, wearing a hat means then the upper lip goes up suddenly. I think the hat sucks in, I think. <laughs> then they start saying say sentences which are funny. I told you about, we had in our family a person who had epilepsy and he was, he was mentally off fellow. And you see, whenever, sometimes he used to get into ego too. Then he would wear very good uh, socks and he would polish his shoes nicely, shine them, wear nice shoes, wear a good suit, maybe three piece or something, and sit down on the bridge of our house where we had a sort of an entrance to the gate and would sit there and he would call someone. I say, big boy. 
I say big bot. I say big bot. I mean, English, he knew only big bot. <laughs> so he thought he was, he's an Englishman. He's to call everyone like this, like this. See? And we would wonder, why does he do like that? What is the thing that makes him say these words like, I say big bot? <laughs> you see, he had seen some English people, you see, talking like that. So he used to call all the people going on the road like this, I say big bot, I say big bot. So then in our family, we, 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 if somebody becomes John Gilpin, we say he's become big bot. <laughs> so this big bot business is horrid should be avoided completely. But the second thing that happens to us is very good, is when we do not, I mean if you are sophisticated, well educated, then it is not bit bot, it is bot bit. Then we say sarcastic things. Say something in a sarcastic way, never in a direct way. In a sarcastic way we enjoy. I mean, you see on the television, you get really surprised how people talk to each other sarcastically. So what? Up, 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 up goes on. And says sarcasm. And according to them, sarcasm perhaps is the uh, intense intelligence or something like that. I don't know, whatever it is, certified as what. But whatever maybe the certificate for it is the most gruesome act. These days we do not kill people, do we? If we kill, we'll be handcuffed. We do not beat children, we do not beat anyone because we'll be handcuffed. But to say a sarcastic thing is in modern times the most gruesome act which is not punishable under law, but not under the law of Vishwa Nirmala Dharma. The sarcasm is the essence of English character, take it from me. Never say the thing straightforward, and that's a sign of intelligence. I've been to a big uh, training of it. First of all, they'll not say anything, they'll sulk. Keep quiet. Not to say it. But if they say it, they must say it like this. Something that is sort of a stagnated, dirty, filthy water that smells. They'll not open their mouth, but once they open their mouth, God save you. God knows what will come out of that mouth. Maybe some snakes, maybe some scorpions. And nobody feels hurt about it. That's the best part of it. So this is one thing one has to guard against, or we should be, not to use sarcasm, comes from left we should be very much. At all, because that's against me. I am never sarcastic with you, am I? I tell you straight forward on your face, you have a boot on your head, that's all. Or if you are an ego, I said it's ego. Why be sarcastic? So we have to learn how to be straight, forward and sweet. Let's first decide today we are going to say nice things to others. But no, nice things will be like this. If somebody, supposing, is a person who, say, is a dwarf, so to say nice things, you will say, ah, what a tall man is coming. <laughs> or if there's a blind man coming, then they will say something, ah, oh, what eyes, beautiful. <laughs> so they start from physical to mental level to anything. They go on describing a person. Why do you describe others? Why don't you describe yourself? The whole energy is spent in describing others. What about yourself? So this is another character that we have. We hurt others through our tongues, 
this tongue is meant for giving the taste of divine to others. To say things that will make people feel comforted for saying mantras. See, if you want telling lies, your mantras will never be fruitful, never activate. But if you are sarcastic, they will never act. Say it thousand times, say it two thousand times, say it million times. To make your mantras effective, you should stop talking in that manner. If you have to talk, talk something that will be pleasing to another person. Now somebody might say, then if you say pleasing, it may not be the truth. All right, then don't say it. Not necessary to say. Just keep quiet. But you decide now to turn your head upside down, which is all the time upside down already, so you put it right now and say that within yourself that now no more of harshness from my tongue will flow because it will never give you the power of mantras. Mantra powers are lost. If you have to say something, say pleasing, always. Moreover, if you have to correct something, if you are in a position, if you are the leader, if you have to say, also say it in such a way that you neutralize it. But no sarcasm at all. This is one of the very big snacks we have on our Vishuddha. Now, what is the other snack we have? Let us see. I am talking to you because just now I am a Britisher myself. The another snack I find is saving pounds, saving labour, saving everything else but your spirit. Like I'll tell you, if you want to find out an Englishman, that's what Indian surgeries tell me. Very easy to find out an Englishman. You ask somebody to close the window, everybody will try to do it, except for the Englishman who will be sitting down. Never get him. Saving labour. And if you tell any word to an Englishman, then he'll stare at you like this. <laughs> like this. How dare you tell me work? As it is, I must tell you about Australians, I used to think they are very healthy people. They are hard working, no doubt, they are very hard working. They come. But I went there and we, I decided to cook food for them in two centres for about once for about 250 and again about 500 people. I mean, I, I go into such ideas. So, in the first place, you see, all the boys who came to help me were all in. They were the ones who were lifting the thing and all that. I said, tell these boys also, they are Australians, after all they are eating so much of meat, they must be having good muscles, why are you doing? I said, no, they are delicate people, mother, don't tell them. I said, delicate how? They, they are very delicate, though they eat meat, they are very delicate. We, we know how to do it, let us do it. And both the places, the same people acted. You were there last time? No, 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 no. Huh? You were not. Who was there in Australia? Anybody? You were there? Yes, Isn't it? Yes. They were all Indians who were working there, mainly. Isn't it true? Yes. Because they said that they are delicate. At the slightest thing, they'll uh, waste time, will go out. <laughs> <laughs> they can't lift these big things. They just can't. And they would not allow. They said, no, no, let us do it. We know they are delicate people. I was really surprised that for Australians they were thinking like that. And what about English? Because of avoiding labour, saving yourself from labour, you have become weak people. If you don't use one finger, don't one, that will become a weak finger, always. Say, if your hand is in plaster for say, say about a week or two weeks, 
take out the hand out of the plaster, the hand cannot hold itself. It becomes weak, isn't it, doctor? It becomes weak. If you don't use your hand, it becomes weak. If you don't use your body, your body becomes weak. <coughs> if you lay out, if you become lazy, you cannot do any work, you don't want to do any work, all your muscles will become useless. Till the age of at least 60 years, you have to use your body very much more than what you are using. So now they will do jogging, they'll do jogging. After jogging this, it's, a, it's an out of proportion thing that they do. They are so exhausted. But do your exercises or whatever it is in normal way, but actually do your work. They cannot. They cannot get up fast, they can. I'll get it. The Americans, that way are very fast. If you tell them, they say, I'll get it. Telephone comes, I'll get it. Ten persons will run and you will know they are all Americans. That's why they have improved. They are so industrious. Very industrious people. Japanese are extremely industrious. See, they had a problem because the cars could not move out in the streets were all full with the cars. So they wanted to build these flyovers and within one year, within one year, within it, they built the flyovers all over Tokyo, all over Tokyo, which is a very large city. <coughs> these small little things, you know, they walk like these little, little things with little, little legs. <laughs> Hiroshima, which was bombed, if you go and see that place, you won't believe it was bombed, except for the museum. And they have kept one building just to show that this is the place that was bombed. Otherwise, you won't believe that that was Hiroshima. Same with Nagasaki. I have seen it myself. Before. I mean, I can't imagine how these people have worked it out. So industrious, so industrious. So, one is lethargy. Krishna has said, the first thing is put it. The worst of all is lethargy. To him, the worst thing that can happen to human beings is lethargy. That is alasyo pijayati. Everything comes out of alasya, laziness. Keep active. Do some work. But in Indian life, I tell you, even my mother was like that. But anyone, if you are standing, why are you standing? If you are sitting, where is you sitting? If you are walking, where are you walking? You should be doing something all the time. You haven't seen anyone uh, in India, you have seen uh, villages, even small children are doing something. Such a hot country in the day, they might have a little siesta. It's a very, very hot country. But all otherwise they are working. That's what only the industriousness will help you and will keep your mind out of mischief. Everything comes after, uh, after you have decided not to be lethargic. Tell your mind not to be lethargic. Lethargic mind brings you all these nonsensical ideas. For that you must have regular habits, which you do not have. I am told that those who have been to colleges and universities have been through some regular trip, this thing, or to some good schools. But once they went to drugs, everything is washed off. So drugs is one thing that kills all your discipline, your proper training of satatya, of consistency. So to overcome that, you must make it a routinous thing, certain thing, absolutely routinous, you'll get over it. I mean, it should be, because routine also helps you in one way, that you do not waste much energy about, say for example, I know I have to give five strokes to my hair just to make it all right, so I give five strokes, finish, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. But supposing I say no, sometimes five, sometimes eight, sometimes seven. 
then I waste my time in brushing my hair. So five strokes for the hair is all right. One uh, wash for one wash up to three times just to wash it off. If you can fix up things like that, you'll be surprised you'll be saving a lot of time. So this is another thing we do not have is a definite number of things we have to do. I'll tell you the story of Gandhiji which you will be surprised. Such a great man like him. To go to his bathroom, so-called hut of his bathroom was there. In between his hut and that hut was there where he had put seven stones. I don't know why he had put them, seven. Seven stones one after another. While going there he used to count them, seven. Coming back he used to count them, seven. All right. And somebody once put one more there because thinking is they are too far away from each other, whatever it is. Immediately said, why the eighth one removed? Again put seven. I mean, you would say such a great man to waste energy on counting his stones was that he was saving his time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'm there. Then I do next thing. Then, So, as far as this material world is concerned, you have to be like a machine. As far as the spiritual uh, life is concerned, you have to be like an ocean or like the energy. The machine has to be fixed and the energy then flows better. You see the two things. The ocean of energy is at work and the machine is perfect because it has consistent things. Supposing now the machine is made with two wires here, supposing you suddenly take out one, it won't work. All these are fixed things as you understand machine very well. And all these fixed things can give you a lot of saving of time. While we try to save time, I have no time. Why? Because I was standing before a mirror for about one hour. Meditation we have no time, standing before a mirror for one hour. What were you doing before the mirror? Trying to comb my hair for one hour. So where you spend so much time could be saved, so save time. For that you must know your priorities and you must know your importance that saving time is means saving time for our ascent. But in our daily life we do that. Supposing there's a, say, there's a man who has to manage some aeroplanes. What does he do? He takes up his time in dressing up. Sometimes he's, he's late, he just gets up, hurries up, somehow or other gets into his cab or car, whatever it is, takes the fastest run and jumps to the aeroplane because he has to carry the aeroplane. That's his job. So, so his priority is not how many times he stands before the mirror, combs his hair, but the priority is he must get to the aeroplane. That's what should be with us also that how much time do we take to do all these nonsensical things and how much time for the right things. So priorities have to change and then you will be surprised, you will have lots of time to do many things. What is your priority? That is to be decided. And in your wisdom you must know your priority is your asset because this chance you are never going to get. This is a special chance, specially for you, specially you are going to get it and you have every possibility of going very high in case you put your priorities. So what is your priority, first thing? Saving time, now saving money. I've seen people, I shouldn't say, but there have been horrible experiences I've had about people, how they waste their money. We have been going to India many a times. And every time people come, they come just like traders. And once it happened like this, with this extent it went, that in, a, uh, in Delhi I had reserved a lot of area for my chandeliers to come with the air India had paid for it and I told them, <coughs> them come with the Sajogis because they can carry in the hand. I don't want it to be thrown away by your people if I said it. 
They said, all right, we'll put them with the Sahaja Yogis. But I didn't tell them chandeliers or anything, but my things. The Sahaja Yogis had so much of weight that they covered all my area, everything, and still there was overweight, which was excused by Air India. And all my, my chandeliers were left there, high and dry, on the airport. Nobody to even to pick them up. And they came here with all these loaded things. I don't know where it has disappeared, all the things that they brought from there. This is one of the things. But there's many a times has happened things like that. So where do you save your money? Why can't you save your money? I have seen two persons like that. I'll say one person who lived in my house. He had food, he had shelter, he had everything with him. He didn't have to spend anything. I was also paying him some money. He never had money all his life. There's another one who came and stayed, who, or same way, I never paid a money to him. He always had money with him. He said, I said, how do you save? He said, Mother, where do I spend? You spend for me. I eat my food here. I have everything, I've got, I don't have to pay rent, nothing, I'm very nicely placed here. Where do I spend all the money that comes to me as a dole becomes a sort of a saving for me. One person never had money and another person saved a lot of money. What is the reason for that? <clears throat> Again the priorities. So these bad habits that you have had before for which you are spending money, and all that must be saved. Now, all right, when we travel, of course, we must pay for your traveling and staying and food and all that. That's a different point. But you must know we are going to have very big problems of our own projects we are going to have. I mean, we need money for that. I'm not going to ask you people, but I know money will come to me. But first of all, I don't even have money at all. Because there's no accounting, there's no proper understanding as to how much you have, how much to spend, where to spend, what to do. And the money is just spent away like that. You must make a compartment of that money also, because as a mother I must tell you everything. See now, you give me money, supposing, for something. I make a compartment. You gave me money in puja, I made a compartment. This is puja money, all right. Now this, I've decided on my own, I did not do, but I decided that I'll buy silver out of it for you. Well, silver is there and all this silver that I gave you and also more I have to give you because you can't have puja with a plastic, all right. I have to give you that silver so that puja money can be used. So I have a compartment, I've written it down. Each and every pie I've written it down. I made a compartment, this one for this one for this one for this one. But you are so haphazard. You will never have money because God knows where you spend your money. So, to understand that you must have proper priorities, you have to do away with things which are not needed. Like I know upon Sahaja Yogi, who is to spend a lot of money, I said, where do you spend the money? He was very fond of Indian food, he was to go to Indian restaurant every day. Can you imagine? One day it happened that we went to that Indian restaurant. The fellow recognized that fellow because he was driving us. I said, oh, how are you here today? He said, why? He said, you didn't come for the last five days. I said, do you mean he comes here every day? Yes, practically. We can't afford to go to Indian restaurant. Every month, maybe once in a while, we have to take some guests and all that, and CP gets money for that. I don't know how you can go to an Indian restaurant and eat food in the restaurant. So, priorities are such that we waste our money here, there, so we have no money. Then we try to save money, we become ridiculous sometimes about certain <coughs> things, which are something, I can't believe that such yogis could be like that. So how can, they all are like beggars then, then how can beggars be generous? Can they be generous? They cannot. <coughs> when you go to India, how Indians look after you? You have seen that. They work so hard. You go to somebody's house, they'll give them 
best that they have in the house to eat. Last time when it was the wedding thing, Warren is another great, uh, what should I say, a kingly person. He wanted to give very expensive presents to the people who got married, very expensive, amounting to about 2,000 rupees each, about. So, and also the hand things and all that would have been about 25,000, I mean 2,500. So I told Warren, I said, Warren, it's going to be too much, all right. So I took away 600 part out of 600, I paid each. Each person who got married, I paid 600 for each other. He asked all the surgeries who were there to pay 108 rupees, means 8 pounds, for 54 marriages, 1 rupee each. On that also I had complaints when I came to London. And Indian Sahaja Yogis on their own collected and gave 10,000 rupees to cover up the expense. What is 108? And then they grudged. That's the worst part of it. When I came back, they grudged about it. I just... You see, from sublime to ridiculous, I just felt, what am I to say? They sent a big delegation. Or that we were lynched and this and that. So what, are you going to give one one P to them or what? And if you are going for a wedding, won't you give some present to them? Why? Because you have to buy things for somebody who is the relations of relations of relations of relations. What is the need to oblige uh, such a distant personality? What is your relationship? Your relationship is with Sajubis. They are your brothers and sisters, really they are your own, whom you should give a present at least on their wedding day, if not otherwise. I don't know otherwise if Sajubis give to anyone. But my uncles, fa mothers, uh, brothers, uh, uh, somebody, 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 he has asked me to buy this for him, so I'm taking So again, the priorities are to be changed. Who are your brothers and who are your sisters? Who is your family? Who is your mother? This is a matriarchal society. We have a mother and we have our children and we are all related to each other. Others are all others. We are one. But I have seen even in discussions people have told me that Sahaja Yogis will take the side of the new Sahaja Yogis and fight. You all should support each other instead of you are taking the side of somebody, third person coming in. Suddenly you get attached to that person, why? So this is one of the special characteristics which we have got, we should try to understand. If you cannot go, don't go. But if you go, then you have to behave yourself. You cannot afford, you should not do it. But if you can afford it and if you have to go there, then go. But don't behave like beggars. That when we come back here, what shocked me that for these 108 rupees I had to talk to people. I mean, really shocked me completely. Now I could pay that back, 108 rupees, not much, to all of you. But it was so, and the discussion was about this. All right. So one should not discuss this. For your information, you know, your mother has spent a lot of money. But I've never said that. I've, no one knows how much I've spent. Even if you ask Gavin, he won't be able to say. Nobody. They know a little bit here and a little bit there and Warren knows a little bit there and somebody knows here. <laughs> but not to be said. When you spend something, you are not to tell. No. Just to be done quietly, sweetly. 
beautiful. But here it's a little thing like that, and to talk like that, I mean, I was really, you are saints, you know, you are saints, you are great people, you are evolved people, you are religious leaders of tomorrow. What are you saying? What are you talking? Just think of that, what is your position in life? So saving labor, saving money, and last of all that we try to save everything for ourselves, selfishness. Tremendous selfishness. And we don't see it sometimes. So please try to understand that all this material selfishness must end up into spiritual selfishness. If you are really selfish, then know the Self, which is the source of everything. If you are really sensibly selfish, are you? Then know that Self, which gives you everything. And now you have opened the way, you have come inside, now you are there, you are sitting here. What more do you want, I don't understand. So. There are some good people, I'm not saying there are not, there are many good people. But those who are not bring forth all these things and they create and generate a situation. In such a thing, supposing in a discussion somebody starts, you should just say, shut up, we are saints, we are not to talk these things. Say if you meet some saints together, they are sitting down, will they discuss these things? Will they discuss these things? Will they talk about these things? Think of it. You are saints. First of all, know that you are saints. Now you are all saints. Now what should you discuss? How we spread Sahaja Yoga? How to talk about God? How to work it out? How to release our energies for God's work? This should be our main concern, isn't it? Went to see Gagangad Maharaj. <coughs> first of all, so you said, I want to talk to you only. I said, you didn't want to talk to Sajogi. So he asked me, so you came on the earth, all right, but do you find us all right? Are we uh, capable enough to receive you? I mean, see the questions he asked me. And then he says that, what should we do on this earth to make you comfortable? What is needed to be done? Because all, all the way you have taken your incarnation here. He talked to me like this. I was amazed. Then he told his disciples, Now this is the goddess sitting before you. What are you doing? Do her puja. You do my puja. What's the use of doing my puja? Do her puja. Every bit of it. I was amazed at his reaction. That's what we have to understand. That we are today. What's it? Huh? No, I, I, I didn't want the uh, lamp to start smoking. The oil. Oil. Out. I mean, it's They're all burning. All right. Does someone burn some oil? No, no, it's burning. All right. It no, will go on burning. It's probably running out. Huh? It's running out. Run out. Soon, run out. But still, they are burning. Do you know how long it has been burning without oil? <laughs> <laughs> I have seen it long time back. <laughs> so, now we come to a point where we understand ourselves from the ridiculous to the sublime point, that we should not oscillate anymore. Let us fix our sublime thoughts one after another, how we climb a mountain, fix one, then another sublime thought. Let some sublime thought come into your mind. Oh, that's such a beautiful thought. All right, fix that. Climb up. Then another sublime thought. You are a source of that. Now another sublime thought. Ah, that's great. Hold on to that. Like that you climb. Through sublimity, sublime. Not degrading thoughts, but immediately if there is some degrading 
argument or suggestion or some sort of a, a big, big argument will start, everybody sitting there. It's even worse than what I find about these BBC people now discussing on the table sometimes, can be very bad. So one has to understand that we, our priorities are going to be very different from all others. For them, ridiculous is important. For us, sublime is important. If anybody suggests anything like that, you should say, no, that's not sublime. No, we can't have it. We can't talk about it. Just talk it. Let us see ourselves fully competing in achieving sublime within us. You have assets, as I told you, that you are born in this country of Sadashiva. You are the heart of the universe, that you are special people to be born here. You had people like William Blake before you. See the vibration. Did he care for anything? Did he talk of anything ridiculous? Did he talk of anything nonsensical? Did he grudge about money? Did he say anything about it? How he stood up and how he said and what he propounded. He wants to create Jerusalem? Do we think like that? We have to create Jerusalem? Then how do we think all these ridiculous things, talking, gossiping? and saying things and not working out through meditation our ascent. I do not know how many more Sahaja Yogis we are going to get, because maybe that after this might get only donkeys, maybe, I can't say. Let us hope we get better people. Let us hope. Whatever you are, you are going to determine the image of the people who are going to come. That's why I wanted to talk to you today, especially for this purpose, that we have to learn that so much is still to be done, Mother is going away. If I go now, I'll come back, of course, for a short time. But at the most two years more, and then what? We have to work hard to come up. These two years we have to all work very hard, especially in the ashrams. I've told you about chastity, that's the first part of it. And there should be absolutely brothers and sisters relationship among yourselves. Like a brother and sister never go and try to please each other, do they? I mean this thing called flirt, what you call flirting, that do they do? And that should go on in the ashram and think. it's very wrong. I think it's very, very wrong to do that. This is an ashram of sages. Sages who have taken their birth after ages. So sages must be worshipped like sages. You cannot dress up like a punk and become a sage. You cannot be like other people. A sage has a face, has an expression, has eyes. His whole gait is different from others. He has confidence as well as compassion. We have to see those images in him. Now, so far, it's all right that we came to Sahaja Yoga for our gain. We are here now for the gain of others. We have gained whatever is possible. We don't want to gain any more. Now let us give this to others. For that we have to have an image. We have to dress up in that way. For example, I was the other day telling the... I don't think it may be too much for you people to believe that, but it's a fact that it's the brain that is upset here. Heart is, of course, is frozen, but brain is responsible. And I told them that every Saturday you must rub your head with so much of oil, nicely, every Saturday. Sunday wash it off. 
But on the whole, the system that existed before this about twenty years back, all the Englishmen used to have very nice combed hair. I mean, they never had fluffy hair or anything. But I think since this hairdressing started, people took to this kind of a thing, and it's very disabled and funny for a saint. He should be properly dressed. There should be neatness about it. Untidiness is not a sign of a saint. You come and see my house; it's very big. I cannot live with untidiness. If it's temporarily or somewhere, it's all right. But if you have to live somewhere, you should be neat and tidy. But it's not so. I have seen people grudging. Supposing you go to Brighton, Brighton people say they came here and went away without even. Putting the beds right. When they come, the same Brighton people when they come here to London, the London people tell me <laughs> that they came here, spoiled everything, did not put anything right, and went out. So the attitude of spoiling others' things and not your own is wrong. You have to change that. On the whole, one has to understand. The appearance, the living system, is to be systematized. Is to be systematized, so that you do not waste your energy in establishing that system which is not so important, and the unsystematic, which is the energy, then works out better if you are systematized. So, a kind of a neatness, a kind. Of a system in your life should be there. I mean, I know of Gandhi ji. He used to go out for a walk, and people could put their watches right by the time he used to walk. The way he used to come and go around. Of course, you need not be slave of the watches. Of course, that's not the point. I'm saying again. I have to say the other thing because you can go to another. Is that, as in the whole, the Western mind is very self-opinionated. It's very self-opinionated. They don't want to learn anything from anyone. They think they are the best. Like, they will go to somebody's house. Oh, I don't like it. This is not good. Or even an artist, say, a person who is well educated in art, and they have not seen the other world. So them. Anything is a big sort of a uh, funny thing. As I told you the other day, when I went to Brighton, these people I talked to Brighton that in Brighton you have got such a beautiful piece of art, where Rajput art and Mughal art is combined together in that royal pavilion outside. Inside they say is I have not seen inside. But the description of that, when I saw in the tourist book, was that it is bizarre, it's absurd. Any one of them can make even one arch like that. Then I can understand. But if you criticize, why? Because you can't do it yourself. Because you can't do it, then it is bizarre. Then it is bad, and this is much more in an English character than anywhere else. They make everybody look very low compared to them, always. Like some sojourners from abroad, I wanted them to come to England to be married. They said, "Not in England. No, we can't live there because they all look down on you." Italians are frightened of you. If you are Argentinians, they are frightened of you. Spanish are frightened of you. French, they say, we are just the same as they are. You see, you can't. <laughs> Austrians don't want to come because though you may not have vibrations, though you may not be very good at realization, you may not be anything, but you just put on a hat and you become. I say, bit bored. <laughs> you look down upon everyone, showing them down. It's the best way to exist in this world. Have nothing. Just try to show down a person. You are no good. It's 
very surprising in Sahaja Yoga people say that about English people, that they don't want to come to England because everyone looks down upon them. You have developed a method of looking down upon But what do you do? What do you have? Let's see. Come to the brass tacks, as they say in America. Let's see. Can you sing as good as that? as that fellow who played the other day. Can you do it? Any one of you in your generations. Can you build Taj Mahal? Leave alone Ajanta. Can you make these rugs? Which, Italy, uh, which, which Persians can make? What have you shown of your merit that you are boasting of. You cannot make the embroidery, the women here cannot. You cannot cook like us, can you? You cannot even make embroidery like the Spanish. You cannot make furniture like the Italians, can you? What can you do? What is the art you have produced? Constable? Turner? All right, I respect them as artists. Are they the topmost? Are they? Derek, you tell me. I don't think so. You don't think so? All right. Nice, you have given me that. So now, what have we achieved so much that we think no end of ourselves? Put a question to yourself, first of all. <coughs> that we look down upon everyone like that and think everybody is a stupid fool and you are the only cleverest person. And even in Sahaja Yoga you do the same thing sometimes. It's not only ego, it's the stupidity which tries to show off. So this is the worst thing that has happened to us, to our character, I tell you. We have no humility of any kind. Anybody who does not know the job will always behave like that. We don't know Sajo, we don't know how to give realization, we cannot understand anything what's happening to another person, but we are great Sajogis going around. I say with bot again. That's the way. It's a serious matter. We have no business to look down upon anybody else but ourselves. What have we achieved? In Sahaja Yoga, I must admit, with all due respect to all of you, all the people, of all the people, Australians are the best. I must say, I am sorry to say, but it is so. Practically every Australian is much more sensitive, you can say. They were the criminals, sent as criminals, they are the children of the criminals, or whatever you may call them. <coughs> then the second are Austrians. French are the last, agreed? But there's a competition between English and French. Who is the last? They also look down upon everyone, the French. Now for you, I know we are very fond of horse racing, so I am putting you onto a race. You have to come up, all of you can, because you have the greatest asset which no one has, that you are born in England, where people like William Blake was born. It was Bhairava himself who took birth. He could not take birth anywhere else, but here he took birth. Who described this house, who described my house, who has said everything about Sahaja Yoga. And he said that men of God will become prophets and they will have powers to make other prophets. Have we become prophets now? 
The powers are not there. You can prophesize. Powers are not there because you are lost in all these frivolous, stupid, nonsensical things. Mantras are not working. Your prophetic powers are not there. Your Kundalini powers are not there. Powers are not working. A weak, weak instrument. Make it all right. Systematize it. You have the greatest advantage. I tell you, you have the greatest advantage. And that's why I called this meeting. Now, I've been to this ashram so many times. I have never been to any such ashram. I've lived here the most of my time. Nowhere, nowhere in the world I've lived like this. Australia, I've been there only thrice, I think. And now things should not be taken for granted. Of course, spreading of Sahaja Yoga is important, but ascent is also very important. Let us now take a tapasya, a vow of tapasya. Let us do it as a tapasya, as a penance, all of you, whether you are in the ashram or in the house. Those who are in the house are also lost. They don't drink, but they sleep. What's the use? So now let us all take it up as a tapasya. And don't indulge into internal nonsensical politics. There are others who are doing it for you. Don't you worry. You just develop yourself well. And when I am out of India, dedicate yourself. When I am away from you, so-called away, dedicate yourself to spread Sahaja Yoga and to ascend. Ascend in a way that constructs the whole universe. Construction. The construction power has to start from. It's a chakra of construction which has to work out through you. Anything that I have said should be taken just as an advice to you for your betterment. Work it out. Just don't just listen to it and forget it. It's a medicine. So please listen to it again and again. Try to follow it in your own life, in your own life, not in others. Mostly others think, oh, she's talking about somebody else. There's a little hint which Gavin wanted me to tell that you should not play about when they don't do normally, but still he wanted me to tell you that the money part of it, you shouldn't try to cheat me in any way, because we have seen some bad results very recently, so you be careful on that. He wanted me to tell you that one has to be careful not to cheat me. So may God bless you all. Mm. So what's the problem of Cambridge? Where is Jim? What's the problem? Huh? Now, you are the collective or your wife? Tell me, who is the collective? All the people in Cambridge. Derek, what do you have to say? I think the collective isn't good then. Huh? The collective is not good. But you are a collective, he is a collective, his wife is a collective. We forget it now. But why? What happens? It plays both ways. All right? I'll say it plays both ways, because you are the leader and they are there. It is your responsibility to see that you do not try to correct them all the time. All right? Now, it is your responsibility to see that you get yourself corrected and see for yourself that you are corrected. It's the way you handle. It's the, you see, the art of a leader is the way he handles. You being an American should know better how to handle. What's the problem? And I tell you, your wife. 
She still catches on. Do you meditate every day? Do you? Show. Sure. There, still catching. I can feel. Let her shift from there, Cambridge, to some other place to get herself corrected. Is it she catching? Very badly. You see, you have a problem that you feel that you must take charge. All the wives of the leaders are not like that, but some of them are like that. Like Madame Chankai, she star, you can say, or Mrs. Bandar Naiki, or Mrs. Kennedy, or we had another one. This what's her name? <laughs> ah, huh? Indonesian one. Horrible. You see, they want to assert themselves <coughs> as people who should control. Is it true, Daddy? Not direct, indirect. Now you should try to correct her first, because maybe it is having an effect on you, Jim. Possibly. You understand my point? She's catching. I can tell you. She is catching. Ask anyone. Right heart, she has. Left heart. Anybody who is sensitive will say that. Now the best thing is you must see her vibrations first. You correct your wives. You correct your husbands in a way to see the vibration. Otherwise, unless you go all out about it, you cannot work it out. Your wife, your husband, all this nonsense is there. Just see to it that you clear it out completely. I think she should shift to some other ashram. That would be better, and keep quiet. You are not in charge; he is in charge. It's a very common thing we are having this kind of a thing. The wife controlling. You know, it happened in Australia, and we had to t- send the wife away to Strasbourg, where she changed. Should we send her to Strasbourg? You know how to cook or not, as an American? Then it's all right. You better send her somewhere. You must get all right, because you influence him, and the whole thing goes out. Now, Derek, what's your problem? You try to find faults with him, do you? No, he tries to find faults with you. What's the problem? What is the problem? You have to tell me. No, I think in Cambridge we caught between two ways of understanding what you say. All right. What is it? I mean, I say such a straightforward thing. I am not such an intelligent woman to say double wedge things. Ah, now what is it? In what point? Let me see. Some of us understand, Mother, that you say we should win people through love and tolerance. Ah, all right. And others understand that we should make people see that there are certain standards that they have to live up to, and those two things seem incompatible to us. Oh, this is. I mean, it is under. It can be understood very well. See, first, supposing I give you a car. Now, say, mother, you have said I have to drive, so I start driving. I don't know how to drive. What's the use? See, people come to you in stages. Both the things are correct. First, come on, come on, come on. Give them food. Give them this, that. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Be very nice. So called. Uh, Protocol is to be done to them because they are newcomers. All right, do not immediately tell them all thing. All right, let them come. When they are nicely settled down, then you let them experience the joy. So they hanker mm-hmm. after it. Now I have said so many things today to you. This I didn't see before twelve years back. Say, if I had said twelve years back. Do you think Gavin would have stuck on to me? <laughs> Ask Gavin how they troubled me. Seven of them, all troubled me such a lot. But I was very patient and kind and affectionate and nice. And then when they became surgeons, now I said, "Come along now." <laughs> then they started asking, "What should we do to improve ourselves, mother? How should we clarify?" So now. Which side are you on the love side or on the correction side? What? How do you interpret it? How do you interpret me? What do you think? 
What did I say? Did it? Both are possible. Huh? We have to do both. No, not simultaneously. Imagine you call somebody for food and hit at the same time. <laughs> First with love. Let them come in. See? And then I t- took me four years, you see, to make these seven uh, great English Sahaja Yogis to settle down. There's one sitting there asking. They used to come to my house, I would cook for them, I would do this, then I started an ashram, then did that and gave them everything. Matt, what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Where is Maureen? Is she here? She'll say it, does it? So, in the beginning you have to do that. I told Gregor very recently, you see, the Germans, he went and he just told them off, you see. And Udo was very, uh, no, that was, Hugo was upset that because Gregor said something they all ran away. So of course I took the side of Gregor, but I didn't want to let him down. But I said that, all right, if such, such uh, runaways are there, what can you do? With, with Germans I don't have much hopes. I have great hopes from English. Actually, that's why to my program I have not yeah. seen there must be any problem. If it is Mataji's program, the whole hall will be filled. And then next day all the birds run away. What's the matter? So, we have to use, first of all, very gentle methods. Very, very gentle. That's a style your mother has. When you came first to me, how did I talk to you? Did I say all these things to you? If I had said as an English man, you see, you could be sarcastic, you would have gone away next day. But today I can say it because you know that is the. Because no more Englishman exists there, it's finished now, you are a such okay. And you would like to improve yourself. So if I say anything, you wouldn't mind, isn't it? That's what it is. So one should not do both the things. First, just love, affection give them food to eat, vibrated food, vibrated salt, these, that, try to look after them, even physical side. Then, then gradually you have to tell them. They say, I don't feel vibrations. You see, you feel uh, left muladhara. What does that mean? So how to tell you, very difficult, you know, it's a funny thing. But you better grow a little bit, then we'll tell you. It's a, you see, keep the curiosity on. But left muladhara is a dangerous thing. You know, it's a very bad thing to happen to anyone. Left muladhara, and on top of that, now you are catching on left swadhisthana. So what is that? It's another one. It's very difficult. See now, uh, among yourselves, you should say, "What to do with this left muladhara?" All right, let us see. Let us see the mantra ourselves. You form a group yourself and show complete uh, attention to him that you are concerned. Now where is it? Oh, it's on the Talk in the third person. Where is the Kundalini now? On the left now? Okay. Now immediately we'll go and ask, are you all right with your wife? Finished. Why should you ask? <laughs> Asking is a common thing. Like one fellow came and asked me, Mother, what's wrong with these people? They are all saying, what's wrong with your father? I said, really? Nothing wrong with your father. No, Mother, there is problem between me and him, but I would not like to discuss it openly. Is it correct or right? But they should not say. They, they are, you see, they know everything, that's what they are telling you, but you better know also about it. Like that I talked to you. But you need not say, what about your father? I've seen people when they gave realization, suddenly they'll ask a question like, no. Say, no, the Kundalini. Just talk on Kundalini. It's not here. It has to move. It has to go. It has to do. Then you come down. Gradually. All right? We have to be tricky people, Sri Krishna. Otherwise, how are you going to take these great Englishmen into your fold? They are not fishermen, which Christ caught. They are Englishmen. You must know. This also shakes with that name. <laughs> so be careful. 
when you hand it, that's, I said the art lies in that. All right, Jim? So now I tell you also as a leader that you should see that you combine them beforehand. You must have a meeting before they come in, how we are going to group them, how we are going to make them come inside. Let us have a proper net spread. So you say something, I say something. Let them feel that we are understanding it. Like somebody can say like this, oh, and another one should say, left we should they? No, 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 no. Do you, do you, then you don't ask the person you feel guilty or anything, you should say, uh, one should not feel guilty much in this, you see, in a third person talking. So the person might say, yeah, I feel very guilty. I say, what is there to feel guilty? And then it's all right. But if you just say, you feel guilty, they said, yes, I will. <laughs> People are very funny, I must say. Like in San Francisco they said that we want to destroy ourselves, why do you want to save us? Now what do you say after that? I said, all right, I'm sorry. <laughs> people are very queer all over, they have become strange people, all possessed, all upside down. See, like I feel two bells are moving, one is moving upward, one is moving downward, with a great tremendous speed. We are on this one which is going upward. We have to pull out people from the other belt. You see, they are moving together, trying to pull them. But what is happening? They are moving downward, we are moving upward. So what we have to do is to somehow or other station ourselves in such a way that they feel we are stationary and we pull them. Otherwise, if you think that this is, then they'll think, oh, these things think no, no end of themselves. They are pressurizing. Very, you see, here they have mentally found out many things, like, you see, nobody should pressurize you. Nobody should uh, want to condition you. Nobody should give you ideas. So just talk on Kundali in a third person. Then you'll get there. Because I went to, always I had a big uh, group coming to see me. But the second one will be less and second will be less. Because as soon as they see the surgery, half of them drop off. Not that they are very good people, they drop out because they have to be dropped, it doesn't matter, but we should try. They cannot be of your quality naturally, you see, all right? So let us develop a very logical, sensible discretion about it, all right? It will get better, Molly. Huh? It will get better, Molly, in Cambridge. Things, will, things will get better in Cambridge. Of course. You, you have to be a good salesman. There are first few words like this, you must say, thank you, sir, of course, of course, they say, is it so? Of course it is so, or something, of course in a good way. They'll say, can you get me a word? Of course, why not? Like that. Anything like that, if you say positiveness of yours, they will be happy. All right? Mm. So now, now what is another problem? Now you please see that you go somewhere and work it out. Ah. Cambridge must grow. Cambridge must grow. It's very important. This is no discussion needed, nothing. To understand me is the easiest thing. You don't sit down and take out every hair of mine and split it. Develop your own discretion. And I'm, I, I'm a Mahamaya, you know, if you go into that kind of a trip, you'll never end it. Don't analyze me at all. Be gross about it. Whatever you hear, all right. This is Mother has said it, all right, do it. Finish. Don't analyze it. If you go to analysis, you lose the synthesis that I have created you. You should not analyze anything. Whatever I say, all right. This is what Mother has said, all right. I am not contradictory. I don't contradict myself. <coughs> do I? Then it's all right. But listen to my lecture, every word and word, if you try to split it, it will be nowhere. 
They are mantras. Every word is a mantra. Whatever I say is a mantra. In fact, I won't use a particular word at a particular time. Well, it doesn't fit into that mantra. Even my movements, you know, the whole universe moves with this. You know that. So everything has a great meaning. So you just don't go try to split me and to understand me intelligently. You cannot. Nobody can understand. I have no intelligence to such an extent that I am beyond your intelligence. I am beyond you. So don't try to split me into words, into things. That's not you cannot do it. Just whatever I've said it, take it, put it down. All right? Now, any other problem, any other thing you have, you tell me. Yes, doctor? Could you explain how can a person have developed a good sense of worth but without becoming arrogant as you describe the English as being? Uh -huh. well, could you explain what a sense of real worth involves? Real? In worth. 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 Now let's see from where the word comes. First of all, let's see the origin of the word. Origin of the word is para vani. That's called as paramani. It's beyond the sound. Beyond the sound. Paramani. The energy. Energy of sound is called as paramani. All right. This paramani is represented within us in our stomach. Is there? It is in the stomach, first of all. And then it ascends gradually from stomach is it is the part where it starts throbbing, supposing somebody has a cancer of the stomach. Then you can feel the throbbing in that area. If you want to find out if somebody has a cancer in the stomach, you put your finger in this and you'll find a throbbing coming. Of course, it is not vice versa also that if there is throbbing, there is cancer. But if there is cancer, invariably there has to be throbbing. There has to be no throbbing in the stomach. If there is throbbing, then that means there is something wrong with your stomach. So first the obstruction takes place to that paravani in the stomach. And that is how this obstruction there makes the sound loud. All right? Then it rises higher into the heart. Into the heart, the same sound becomes audible. When it becomes audible, when you start hearing it, that happens because that energy makes the heart pump. And that pumping makes the sound, but is anahat, is the one which is without percussion. Then the same sound energy goes in the Vishuddhi chakra. When it goes to the Vishuddhi chakra, then it is Pashanti, it is the one that sees Madhyama, here Madhyama, here it is Pashanti. Pashanti means it sees, it sees. That sound just sees means. If there is any sound anywhere, it sees that. It knows, it sees. It's the witness state of the sound here. And on this sound only, you have seen how animals, everybody lives with that sound, act with that sound. Say, an animal, supposing this one type of a sound is going on, tuck, 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 continuously, it knows everything is fine. But if there's any change, it knows there's a change. So the sound of here, of at Vishuddhi, becomes a Vashanti, means the one which sees. Any sound comes, we immediately start seeing. It acts on our eye. Any sound. So it is in Vashanti state. But then it becomes Vaikhari in the sound box. Vaikhari means it speaks. So now it comes from Paravani. Madhyama, here, 
then it becomes pashanti and then it becomes vaikhar it speaks all right so when it speaks then it is modulated by many things that is is all connected with brain we are connected to the brain the brain has two sides one is the conditioning another is the ego and these two sides act on the vishuddhi as you know that here first splitting takes place first crossing takes place at this so at vishuddhi if you have a right side vishuddhi you are arrogant you are blunt you say things just like that without feeling what another person is going to feel about it how he is going to react or anything why against the question in the center resides shri krishna and shri krishna is madhuri and sweetness because you have diverted yourself from there you become harsh on the left hand side is the vishnu maya is the power where right side is with talat tap tap like in uh, they say in the figures of speech in what we use in the moods of sanskrit language they will say that when you have to describe the veera rasa the one uh, uh, of war if you have to describe the war you have to tha 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 no these are the things tha tha the vithal 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 as you say here this tha see is the side that that you just in in and also indian languages or even sanskrit language is like we'll say we have to some thokne hit somebody takkar all these words we use so so the language it's phonetic as well as expressive so what happens that on the right side you become ta 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 na speak like that all right now left side is vishnu maya vishnu maya is the one is the accumulation of the clouds and when they rub you get the vishnu maya is the electrical so it comes like a electrical thing so that's a what you call the sarcasm it is accumulation of all these conditionings within us that we suddenly come out sada what did this and it just cut out that person so these two reactions take place of this energy which is here is dha dha can you say dha dha ra dha is a mind da so this dha that is within us is to be used as an indication of our sweetness gentleness but some people who are gentle by force you see that forced to be gentle then suddenly they come out as with fish to my you see they have to be normally gentle all right i'm very kind very nice this that then you crack at a point when you crack then you say something sarcastic or you may use right side also but mostly it's sarcastic because that's how you outlet give an outlet to your conditionings so that's how these two things happen all right but in the center is the ta think of shri krishna of his childhood what pranks used to play how sweet he was how he used to uh, play with the mother how he stole the butter and that's why i say butter is the solution ghee is the solution for making your sound sweet your talking sweet you have to be like butter this is sanskrit complete beautiful not tell you sanskrit but the translation like this that some people say yes uh, uh, some people say that a saint's heart is like butter but butter melts when it is heated but a saint's heart melts when others are heated So you are saints. Mm-hmm. 
So to be in the center. Yeah. That's the best way. And I must say, Ishuddhi is a big, big, big problem in England. Especially left Ishuddhi is so much. You don't know, I get such terrible pains all over with left Ishuddhi. So one should talk very sweetly. Now, who promises me that? Let me see the hands. You are promising me, all right, you are promising Adi Shakti, remember that. Be careful. Right hand. Better put up right hand. Thank you. May God bless. All right.
Daniel sa rin yung hindi mong statak. Si Marta si dice che gli italiani sono veramente molto emozionali. Thank you.